Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing all right. Um, it's a beautiful weekend so far. Um, I'm not dressed yet. I'm not ready for anything yet. I thought I would try out my um, new foundation, Skin Paradise by L'Oreal. This is the old one. It's, I still have quite a lot of it. And this is the um, one that I had been looking for and couldn't find up until now. And so um, bear in mind that my skin is a little darker than usual because I had a bad burn about two weeks ago. And um, I had such a horrible flaky crust all over my skin. Um, I don't know what it was. I didn't put anything on my skin. It must have been the sun. So um, what I want to do is compare just a dot, okay? Um, this is the new one, number one. And that's the color. This is the one I've been using. Wow, it actually looks lighter. I don't I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that. Um that's weird. So um I'm sorry I bought it. I like the older one better. I like the number two. Um, isn't that weird? Um, that can't be, guys. Uh, why is pale um, darker than light? I don't understand it. Uh, they both are good colors, though. Um, I would strongly recommend mixing them if you're ever stuck in a situation like this and you have, look at the difference. That's a big difference. Um, I, I can't get over it. I guess I didn't go over the charts because I am cool toned and cool toned is much better. Cool tone makeup is much better on me than warm toned. And for a great many years, I was using warm toned and I couldn't figure out why it didn't look right. You know what I'm saying? Until I switched to the cool tone um, families. And so this is probably cool toned, um, probably. And so I think I'm gonna stick with this one, guys. I'm glad I still have a lot left. <laughs> so guys, um, this is the faux face. It's dark. I'm wearing the um, one I bought last night. It's dark and it's very obviously warm toned and it would look wonderful probably in the summertime after I've been walking for an hour or so, you know, when you get that rosy color in your face, um, but it's much too dark for winter time. So maybe I ought to go out and buy another um, number two foundation because I don't want to run out. And sometimes it's hard to find number two. So um, anyway, what's on the agenda for today? Well, I have been eyeing this new <laughs> pizza recipe um, that I came across. Um, I'm not sure I'm up to pizza. But I, I do love making them, and um, I enjoy seeing, you know, that moment of truth, whether it comes out or not. Um, I still have a lot of tomato sauce in the refrigerator, and so I may as well start using more of it up. And um, I, I may make two. I would have to buy one ingredient, maybe two ingredients at most, um, for this other one. 
And um, I'm not sure. We'll have to see because I, I don't know what's going to, you know, transpire today. I, I hope I have a good day. Um, I had a, a great night last night uh, chatting with an old friend. And um, I just can't wait to get this day started. Um, it's actually quite late in the afternoon, but I've been sort of house cleaning. And, you know, um, I, I don't know, guys. I, I want to say one more thing. Uh, I really feel as though I should shelve the Maddie McCann content for now. And I don't want the McCanns to suffer any more than they already have. And, you know, I wasn't aware that they at first rejected the idea of doing a DNA test. I think that they are good people deep down. Maybe they have ways of hiding their emotions and their feelings. It, it could be cultural. But imagine what they've gone through these past 20 years uh, without Maddie McCann. And so um, I am happy to hear that the McCanns did go through with the DNA testing. I'm not sure if the results are in, but there's a lot of speculation that Julia is indeed not a McCann. And I'm very disheartened about that. I'm disappointed, but I have expected it because I could sense that it was off. It was slightly, the physical appearance, um, mainly the coloring of her skin um, and her hair and her eyes were slightly off. Not quite Maddie McCann, if you know what I mean. And her facial features, although they resembled the uh, age-progressed images of Maddie McCann to a T. Um, we don't know for sure what Maddie would have looked like at 6, at 10. We don't know. Um, so it's very hard to do this. We need DNA. We can't go by looks alone. This is a, a very good lesson to help us understand that things are not always what they seem and look like. Isn't that, um, isn't that really surprising sometimes? And so what's on the agenda for today is that I would, because so many people don't seem to remember and I, for the life of me, I only heard about Livia and Alessia Shep two days ago. And I was shattered. I was shocked because of the resemblance between Julia and Livia. Now, I don't know if they're the same person, but they sure as heck look identical. I mean, um, age progressed adult, child, you know what I'm saying? Um, the 11 and 12 year old Livia strongly resembles the 20 year old Livia at uh, Julia. And um, the, the Livia that was photographed with her sister, Alessia, they all look the same to me, but we don't have the DNA. Um, I will go over the story, which is heartbreaking, guys. It's heartbreaking. If if you can imagine Maddie McCann's story, um, the heartbreak was quite real, especially for all her loved ones and family and friends. But this one, oh, my God, I cannot imagine what the mother has gone through. And I would like to speak briefly on that tonight, um, just briefly, because, I, you know, this is starting to become upsetting to me. Um, I, I know that I can't solve the world's problems in two videos. No, that's not happening. But um, I, I'm just, you know, the cases are both very old. And um, I think because people are going to start seeing Maddie walking around more if she's still alive. I, I think it's essential to keep that story alive, the images alive. And I wish 
that the McCanns would let me know if they object to this. Um, there are already so many images and videos posted about her anyway. Um, I'm going to be very careful not to pass down any judgment about the police investigation because I know a number of teens worked on this case, not just the Portugal police. No, it was a great many. And, but it's so dissatisfying for me to um, watch this unfold and nothing transpires, nothing materializes. So I, I kind of want to get the word out there and then move on. It's going to be hard to move on after this because I'm waiting and waiting for a positive result, uh, a confirmative answer about anything. But I know that Alessia and, Aliv and Livia's mother is still out there. She's still in Switzerland. And so we'll talk more about that later. Um, but it's such a heartbreaking story, guys. Um, I never realized until this morning when I was skimming over the article, um, Wiki, Wikipedia, um, it's, it's quite tragic, in my opinion. And so uh, I'll, I'll go over that briefly. No vitamins or minerals tonight. <laughs> maybe a recipe and maybe a little tiny shopping expedition. Nothing more than that today. Um, I, I've had it with excitement. <laughs> I'm on to nice, calm, uneventful days. All right, I'll see you later. but boy, it was kind of pricey. Um, so I'll let you have a look. So, you know, guys, I did say that I didn't want to make a pizza yesterday, and tonight I want to make one. Um, I thought I would go ahead and get some more of these because even though I have a couple um, in the um, refrigerator, uh, which are half used. I, I think I'm going to just try to, um, I, you know, I don't know how much uh, the pizza crust can take. So I, I decided to buy a little extra. And I, I think I'll pop some of these on top of it. And I did need one more can of these. Um, boy, the ham was expensive. And I don't really care for smoked or Black Forest. I, I find it on the, a bit on the sweet side, but it was really basically all they had. Um, but I mean, it's beautiful ham, but 
I, I'm not crazy about Black Forest. And uh, I bought some more mushrooms. And guys, this is the original. Um, it's not the thick. It's not the thin, but it's right in between. And it does come with its own tomato sauce right there. And so um, there are two of them, if you can see that. So I think I'm going to have myself a nice old time tonight making pizza. And um, I'm going to try to make one that my mom and I used to make, and we loved it. And I'm also going to uh, put some olives on it. And this time, I, I don't really have to um, saute the vegetables. I'm going to try to do it without sauteing anything, except for maybe the mushrooms because they may be watery. And so I'll probably cook them um, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. And uh, of course, I have tofu. I'm going to pop tofu on the pizza. And um, I think, guys, instead of using tomato sauce, I'm not sure what to do. I think maybe I'll, I'll put tomato sauce on one and leave the other white. I'll make one slightly different from the other. And so this is going to be fun because uh, I actually am cheating with the animal protein. I haven't had ham in maybe two years. I'm pretty sure it's been two years, guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this to myself now, but um, I have such a craving for uh, a big, chunky piece of pizza. You know what I'm saying? And yesterday, I guess I ate too much the day before. What can I say? Yesterday, I didn't want pizza. Today, I'm craving it. So um, this haul, my goodness, guys, it costs a lot. Um, cost me for these few items... $30.45. Wow. I know that there are places that are much cheaper, and I could have made my own crust. Uh, the crust was $7.49. I could have saved myself eight bucks, but I didn't feel like, you know, I didn't feel like uh, making. I, I've been putting my kitchen through the ringer lately. I didn't feel like rolling out the dough. You know what I mean? Um, so there you go. My little mini haul that cost me $30.45. Uh, so everybody, I thought that since I have to saute my um, mushrooms, I thought I would start off with, um, you know, a little... Um, I. I'll put the mushrooms up. Uh, I'll slice everything up. And uh, you've seen me do it a million times, but I I'll, I'll, may give you a highlight or two. And then um, before I get into making the pizza, I, I want to talk to you about um, the disappearance of Livia and Alessia Shep in Switzerland. And it's a tragic, tragic story. And um, first of all, I want to say, before I get into anything, the pizza, the story, I, I have to really commend and praise the McCanns for doing the DNA test. They are wonderful for doing it. I think, um, I you know, I had the idea that it it may not be Maddie McCann, this Julia Wendell, who's a beautiful young lady experiencing some legal issues and some emotional troubles due to her uh, lack of memory of her childhood. And so it could be, it could be that um, there's another plausible explanation for all of this. But I, I really sense that way deep down, she knows what she's talking about. She feels the connection with Maddie because of experience, not just the physical appearances, experience, guys. And I imagine that Maddie, whatever happened to her or wherever she may be now, in whatever state of life, I, I imagine that part of her left, walked away when 
that person took her away from her family. That is typically what happens, guys. Um, you can't expect a happy, go lucky, normal, bossy child to automatically become meek and passive and fall in love with her captor when she had such a beautiful family. She was very close to all of her family and extended family members who are probably beside themselves. They've never, um, they've never heard an inkling from Maddie McCann ever again since May the 3rd, 2007. And so, um, you know, the McCanns were put through so much with all the sightings around the world of little girls that actually did resemble Maddie, but probably cited by people who didn't see the pictures or, or know Maddie's images that well. I mean, they're all beautiful little girls that were captured on CCTV. I think maybe one of them may have resembled Maddie and her captor, who looks like Christian Bruckner. And, but I don't know. I don't know. I have no information on that. But the, the McCanns were put through such a, an emotional turmoil with all that investigating, and nothing ever turned up. And so I am so happy that they did they had an inkling that it probably may not be. They must have some idea that it might not be. Julia might not be Maddie. And but I I feel like they should be applauded for being courageous enough to face all of this all over again. And so, gee, I'm not liking this foundation. Not too much. And so uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, I think the McCanns are wonderful that way. And uh, they're very strong and courageous parents. And I think they um, provide such a wonderful uh, model for other parents in very similar circumstances to follow. And so um, bravo, bravo for them. I know that Kate is beside herself. Every time something like this happens, I, I can't imagine what the McCanns must go through. But I'm glad that they decided to help this young lady. And if the McCanns are listening, why would they listen to a little old channel like me? If the McCanns indeed do manage to capture this video, um, I, I wish to extend a message to them and, and ask them to please um, help Julia uh, in trying to find her own identity because very clearly she is disturbed by what is going on with her family situation and she probably may be a missing child. And... I hope the McCanns can find it in themselves to use the resources that they have and help Julia find her lost mother and probably her lost father. Um, I'll, I'll get into that story in a little bit, but I, I really hope that the McCanns don't end the relationship with Julia here with the DNA test. I hope that somehow through mediators or other persons involved um, and the police, thank goodness that they saw the light and, you know, decided to um, okay the DNA results, although they don't need police to okay it. Um, I hope that the McCanns plot through. I'm not saying that it'll help them find Maddie, but I think it might get them, maybe it'll get them closer to the truth. And you can't figure it out unless you actually go through it. So the McCanns, I hope that they continue to help Julia um, beyond the DNA test. I really hope that they do. I know that they don't, you know, if it were another parent, they would have said maybe go to hell. 
but not the McCanns. And I'm so, I'm actually proud of them. But um, I, I think, I don't know what I would do with, if, I, if it were me in, my, in that situation, I don't know what I would do. So um, thank goodness the McCanns came through for Julia. And maybe now she can channel her energy um, if she finds that the results are not what she expected, she can start channeling her energy elsewhere and, and try to look into other options, other possibilities. It, it, we need to do this. It's a process of elimination and deduction. If you don't have the DNA test, you can't proceed. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, guys, on to my... Um, mushrooms, and then I'll get back to you with the story, and then I'll continue with the pizza. So I'm sorry to do it this way, but I don't want to make a mess of my kitchen while I'm talking about Julia and Alessia. I, I want my kitchen to be nice and neat, like that my thoughts don't go all over the place, you know, with, oh, I have to clean the kitchen now, you know. Um, so I'll get back to you in just a few minutes and bear with me, so I'll be back. pizza already before having my talk with you about the disappearance of the twin girls in 2011. And uh, the reason why I went ahead and decided to make the pizza right away was because um, I had to saute the uh, other vegetables as well, because I do remember that it took uh, they were not cooked well enough without being sautéed the last time I tried to put them in the oven raw. So I ended up sautéing everything. I made two pizzas. One um, is so delicious. However, I think I should have bought the thicker crust. Um, it's delicious, guys. It's delicious. But it, it, it just, it kind of, everything comes off. And um, it was like my first few pizzas that I made. Um, so it's delicious, however. And the pizza crust is also very delicious. And so um, the other one is still cooking. I have to keep my eye on it. And so I thought I would get um, started on um, Livia and Alessia Shep and what happened to them in 2011. And so, uh, Alessia Vera Shep and Livia Clara Shep are missing girls from St. Sulpice, a suburb of Lausanne in the um, area of Vaud, Switzerland. And so, Matthias Shep, their father, picked up his twin daughters from his ex-wife's home in St. Sulpice. And they were never seen after that. Not the daughters, uh, not the father, none of them. 
And so, um, you know, his ex-wife, um, she must have been beside herself. The body of Matthias was uh, found in Italy, and uh, which is where they got married. Um, Matthias and the mother, uh, hold on, I'm gonna look for the mother's name. So the mother is Irina Lucidi, and the father is Matthias Shep. And so um, he was picking up his daughters and they were at his ex-wife's home. I assume that his ex-wife had custody and they were never seen again. And so that would have been January 30th, 2011. And so that disappearance, everyone, led to a massive police hunt across three countries, Switzerland, France, and Italy, which is uh, eventually where Matthias's body showed up. And so um, they were, the girls were six years old at the time, and uh, they have up to date been missing for approximately 12 years years or more. And so, um, oh, what a story. On February the 11th, the police found, um, uh, the police said that Shep uh, sent his wife, his ex-wife, um, I don't know if it was Shep or someone else, but it, it, it suggested that he killed he murdered the girls. And why would somebody go as far as to confess if it were really true? Something about that sounds off. And um, also the mental state of the father, Matthias, was quite unstable. And what can I say? So according to CNN, the Italian newspapers uh, published a single sentence from the letters which said, the children now rest in peace. And so um, that was it, guys. I, I think that was what led the search to kind of taper off. Um, and so um, it, we found out that the computer on the hard drive of Matthias, the, the hard drive, it showed that he searched for poisons and firearms and timetables for the ferry that took uh, that would take him across to Italy, and so um, it's um, it's very sad, guys. It's very sad. Uh, we don't know exactly um, what what happened to the girls, and that's the sad part because Matthias is dead. So uh, the general timeline. It goes a little like this. On Friday, January 28th in 2011, Matthias Shep picked up his daughters to spend the weekend with him uh, as probably customary. And so on Saturday, January 29th, Shep sends the SMS, I, I assume by cell phone, to his wife saying, um, we're okay, we'll return on Monday. So I don't know if there was something unusual going on or what. Um, so Sunday, uh, the very next day, uh, January 30th at noon, the girls were seen for the last time with Shep in St. Sulpice, Vaud, Switzerland. And then, um, a few hours later, Shep crosses the border into France. And then Monday, January 31st at 12.30, Shep withdrew money from several ATMs in Marseille, France. And so um, he sent a postcard to his wife from Marseille. And Shep and the girls took the evening ferry to Propriano, Propriano in Corsica, Sicily, Italy. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure 
exactly if that was the way it was supposed to go. I, I doubt that it was the way it was supposed to go. So um, anyway, on Tuesday, February the 1st at 6.30, um, and it doesn't specify a.m. or 6 p.m., you know what I mean? Or 6.30 p.m., I should say. Shep um, deboarded a Propiano, Propriano with or without his daughters. Nobody knows for sure. So um, that's weird. And so at, um, a few hours later, Shep took a ferry from Bastia in northeast Corsica and arrives at Toulon the next morning at 7, I guess, 7 a.m. On Wednesday, February the 2nd, at 9.13, um, Shep is photographed alone at a toll without the girls. On Thursday, February 3rd, Shep is observed by a witness all the way out in Naples, Italy. Man, that guy was really moving around. And at um, a while later, Shep throws himself under a train at Cherry Nola in the southeast Italian region of Apulia. Wow. Wow. And so um, we, we can uh, take away from this quite a bit because we first of all see that Matthias was not um, normal. We don't know what problems he may have experienced with his wife if she was with someone else. It doesn't really matter, but he had the girls with him and they were never seen alive after that. And so, allegedly. And so um, they found his body, guys. He is gone. He is gone. The girls, we don't know what happened exactly. And so... Um, it's it's such a tragic story. Can you imagine the mother of those children? Um, I first of all, I can't imagine why anyone would do that to a mother of twins, unless there was something really seriously wrong. But no, I I don't mean to excuse Matthias. No, I just mean that I don't understand the situation. Um, and so whatever happened to those twins. Most likely they were sold or trafficked or given up for adoption. They were stolen, guys. They were abducted. They were stolen. Matthias created all kinds of crimes right there. And um, it, it's so we realized that he was seriously imbalanced. He, he didn't, he wasn't in his right mind. He couldn't have been. Uh, no matter how upset he was with his wife. He couldn't have been in his right mind. And so can you imagine the um, the horror of Irina when she found out that the girls were never coming back and that Matthias had transpired? I, I can't imagine what she must have gone through and what she is still going through because those girls were never returned to her. Um, they will never return to her. Nobody knows for sure what happened to the girls. Most likely they're with other people. They were very definitely separated um, because that's usually what happens with twins. But I can't say because I don't know. Nobody knows. And unfortunately, that is a sad story, which I find very, very tragic of um, Alessia and Livia Shep. And that is why, everyone, that if this indeed is, if Julia is indeed Livia, we can't just let it go. We have to find out if Irina is her mother. Uh, supposedly, Irina is... Um, is still alive. And you know, in the first place, I had the story wrong. I assumed that it was both parents looking for the children, but it was never that way. It was just the mother frantic looking for the father and the children. 
until, of course, she found out that Matthias committed suicide. Um, again, we have to wonder, was it Matthias that masterminded all this, or was it foul play? Did somebody come along and just decide to do this in order to take the girls? Um, your guess is as good as mine. Nothing has ever been found to link any more evidence to the disappearance of these two girls or to the death of Matthias Shep. And so, guys, that is the tragic story of these two little ones who went missing in 2011 in Switzerland. And so uh, that is the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed um, making pizza with me and um, listening to me talk about uh, different sorts of things. But um, I wanted to over, over give an overview of that case because not everybody knows about it. Certainly I didn't. This is the first time that I've ever actually looked at this case. I only found out about it this morning. Um, well, I knew that Livia and Alessia were missing girls, but I didn't know the story behind it. And so I, I hope that for, you know, everyone's sake all around, that Irina and Livia get a chance to get together. I don't know what the situation really is. I don't know if Irina is okay. Her husband was extremely unstable. And the way that I um, remember reading other details was that this couple had married actually in my mother's part where my mother was originally from in northern Italy, which is, um, hang on. So they married in 2004 in Ascoli, Piceno, Italy. So that's basically a beautiful, beautiful area of Italy. My mother was from right around there. And so I, I visited it a couple of times. It's, it's very, very, um, it, it's unbelievably beautiful. It, it's um, really something to write home about. And so um, they both worked for the tobacco company then which was very popular still. I don't know if it's still around, Philip Morris. And so what a, what a wonderful way to meet <laughs> at a tobacco company. Um, so um, the, it's very, very sad that the couple didn't get along. But of course, if Matthias was so unbalanced, it would have happened with anyone. And I, I feel bad for him because I think that he probably would have been able to give the girls so much if he had just, you know, maybe gotten some help. Um, I don't know what the problem could have been, guys. There are a great many pictures, photographs of Matthias um, online, and he was quite handsome. He was quite handsome, and it's a shame that uh, he, I don't know if he did it or someone else did it, but it's a shame that his life ended that way. Um, it, it, what a horrible way to uh, meet your death. Um, it, it does seem to me that it was pretty um, intentional and he did it. But we can't be sure of all those little details. Um, he was actually born in Canada. Um, so he's Canadian. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, I shouldn't laugh. But um, he was actually a, an engineer who went to Switzerland, and that's where, um, in his travels, he met Irina. And so what a romantic beginning, and what a tragic ending, especially for the twins. Oh, my goodness, guys. I, I just can't imagine. That is why we need to find Livia's mother. We need to look at her and, and get the DNA tested. And maybe if um, this other mother won't do a DNA test, maybe we can get Irina to do one. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas around. I, you know, I, I just don't want Julia to be in that situation anymore. 
And I don't know how this is going to end, but I think I should put this entire case on the shelf for now. And tomorrow I'll be turning probably back, uh, maybe back to the vitamins, maybe not. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So um, hopefully you're all having a great weekend. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now. Thank you.